Hey friends, welcome back to the Eaton Homestead. Um, I have been pretty remiss in doing my garden tours, so I just wanted to get back on track with that. And, um, you know, my friends have kind of been giving me some grief about, you know, where's your garden tour? And I think that, to be completely honest, the reason that I've been procrastinating it a little bit is just because I'm a little bit disappointed. I know that I need to just be easier on myself because this is really my only, my third year of gardening, um, really and truly. And I started off with one raised bed. Last year we expanded into the in-ground area that I still have. And then this year we did that huge expansion with all of the new beds. Um, and I was just hoping for more production, I guess. I was hoping to be able to really support my family's food needs better and stuff just hasn't done great. I know everybody like across the country it seems like people are saying that this has been a weird growing season. Again I wouldn't know I only really have these three years of experience um, but I have definitely found some things that I'm going to do differently for next year um, and maybe some of the reasons why my stuff is going kind of slow. We did have a really wet, cold spring, so it was hard for stuff to like get established and get going, because um, our spring was just weird. Like we didn't get a nice spring, and then all of a sudden summer popped up. So now everything's kind of catching up, but um, it's still very beautiful, and I'm still very proud of it and thankful for it. I know that I have much more space and uh, much more resources available to me than lots of people do. So I don't mean to sound ungrateful, but. Um, I think that's why I've just sort of been dragging my feet a little bit because I wished that it would have turned out a little bit better. But we still have time and um, I'm hopeful to still get lots of harvest and bounty from this garden. But let's go take a look at it. So probably the biggest and most important addition to the garden isn't really so much the garden, but it's this chicken coop. <laughs> We went and purchased this 10 by 10 dog kennel off of um, our friend down the road and sort of rigged it up to be a chicken run. So now the chickens have um, their coop to be in and they have this run to be in, but they do not have free range over the entire property. And that is because they were seriously destroying the garden and that in addition to the chicken poop everywhere, which is not my favorite, especially on my front steps, that makes me nuts. Um, they needed to be contained, which was the plan all along, but we purchased this coop off of um, someone on Facebook Marketplace, and it had a run attached to it, but it was just like falling apart, and when Nate and the guys tried to move it, they couldn't, so they had to like rip the run off and just save the coop. So we were talking about rebuilding a run, but you know, if you've seen my other videos and social media and stuff, you know that we also are doing a real estate flip. So we're kind of busy with that and don't have time to be building chicken runs. <laughs> so this works out really well. Nate cut a hole in it. So the uh, coop door opens up and he put the ramp on there this morning. So I am just so happy and relieved to see them nice and happy, but well contained. <laughs> Hey girls, hey girls. Hey girl, hey. Hello. So you can probably see, we were supposed to get eight laying hens. Um, that's what I purchased. <laughs> thinking that they were all eight laying hens. Um, and I understand it's really hard to sex baby chickens. So we got seven and a rooster. Cause that guy is definitely not a girl. That's a boy. Yeah, you. <laughs> so anyway, that's the chicken coop. This shed is ultimately going to be the garden shed, 
um, but it's just sort of gotten away from us. So that's one of the things on my to-do list is to get that organized so that all of the gardening and lawn care stuff can go in there. So anyways, garden. Hi, Luna. Hi. <laughs> the in-bed garden, as you can see, completely got away from me. Um, we went on vacation for two weeks and before we left, I weeded this thing like thoroughly and thought it would be great and then we came back from a two week vacation and it was just overgrown and I've honestly just been too overwhelmed by it. I did come out here yesterday and started trying to pull some weeds around these zucchini plants um, that I'm hoping will still be productive. There's one that's got a fruit set on it there. But this whole side was all of my potatoes um, and they looked really great. The problem was that even though we had put down more soil on top of this, the soil underneath is so hard and dense that the potatoes just couldn't grow down. So I am hoping to get like a broad fork or something for next season, next year, to be able to really loosen that soil up and maybe be a little bit better productive with that. My corn came up spotty over here. I had to lose a few of my glass gem corn to the chicken run, but it's well worth it because you'll see what has happened. So sorry the lighting is weird this morning. The shadow off of the house is a lot. I want to get some flowers in there for next year. But over here, I just cut a bunch of these zinnias for the house yesterday. Marigold. I got one little okra plant there and some um, cilantro. My sunflowers have finally opened up and that makes me so happy. But both of these rows of tomatoes here were all mystery plants that I had become unlabeled and I didn't know which was which. So still a surprise. But lots of them have set fruit. So we'll see. I'm just loving that. So are the bees. <laughs> Luna, stop eating the grass. Cut it out. Clearly, this walkway, not awesome. But got a couple dragon's tongue bush beans, which I've since learned I really don't need. I wondered if they would trellis. They don't. But the scarlet runner beans are crazy. They just grow and grow. Tons of flowers on them, but I have not seen a single bean yet. Over here are cucumbers. So again, I'm pretty sure that down here is chicken damage from eating the leaves. But this is a national pickling that looks like it's doing pretty well. It did set one fruit and then the chickens ate it. These two are cucumelons. So that one looks like it's doing pretty well. I'm um, just hoping to get some production off of it. It does have little tiny baby fruit set on there. So I'm really excited to try that. This is all of the beans, so it's mostly green beans, but a few like yellow wax beans, and I stuck a couple more dragon's tongue in there. And I really gotta get out here either today, today, <laughs> to pick some, because they're pretty loaded in there and weeded out a little bit. More scarlet, scarlet runner beans that I have not just had the chance to do any trellising for, so the plan was to do either sticks or twine or something to give them something to climb haven't had a chance, so this has just become an experiment in what happens if they don't have anything to climb. Over here are carrots, which I really would like to pull these up uh, within the next day or so and see how they did, and resell carrots for fall garden. Um, I'm hoping that we'll have enough time to get them good and established, and after they get a frost, they just taste so good. So I'm really looking forward to that. And these on the sides are parsnips, um, I had had some turnips and radishes in here before and those got pulled. I re-sowed it with more turnips and the chickens came and used it as a dust bath. So now I'm not getting great germination and I need to re-sow that. But 
Again, I'm gonna clean this out and hopefully do a second round of root stuff for for the fall. Luna, are you the one eating the plants? Okay, so I ran into the house because my card was full. So I needed to empty it onto the computer. And you saw Luna out here with me, um, who then proceeded to power puke all over my floor. Um, like, a lot. Really gross. She is constantly out here eating grass and then makes herself puke, and I don't know why dogs do that. But it makes me crazy, and it's really gross. Um, somebody was recently just saying to me, well, it looks like you're really living the life. You've got the garden and home with the babies, and I am. It's awesome, and I'm so happy and thankful to be home with my babies and have time to do this during the day and whatnot. But there's a lot of body fluids involved, mostly poop, which I can handle. It's the puke that really does me in. So anyway, did that. Then I had to go drop Amelia off for a play date and run around and do some errands. So it's a while later now and the sun is out it's very very bright sorry lighting is crappy but it is what it is and Wyatt's asleep so I'm gonna try and get this done before he wakes up so let's continue if I can even remember where we were at I think we were talking about carrots so over here are some eggplants on this side and a couple of these have started to set some fruit so that's pretty cool there's that guy um, and there's more cucumbers on the other side of that trellis, but over here I started my strawberries from seed which apparently is like a lifelong commitment so They really weren't very well established for this year So I just put them kind of over here and they're already starting to shoot off which is cool So I just used the rest of the space for some like miscellaneous extra things. I've got a few okra um, a couple more eggplants which are also putting on some fruit um, and a pepper and just a couple of sunflowers that I just stuck there on a whim um, some rosemary back in that corner so yeah I'm gonna let this stuff do its thing this year and then pull all that out cover up the strawberries and hopefully just let them eventually spread and have this whole bed to themselves there's the offender back there <laughs> Uh, kale is looking awesome. I've been eating off of this a lot. Um, it hasn't gotten too big, but I'm thinking that's because of how closely I planted them. There's some parsley. So this is the scarlet kale, and then just a regular lacinito, I guess is what it's called. Um, there's some basils in the back here, and then tomatoes on this trellis. So again, like they're looking good. They look very healthy. I did come in here yesterday and prune them quite a bit. Um, especially the ones in the back were getting pretty bushy, but like I said, um, my friend Kate, uh, my BFF, I went over to her house yesterday and her tomatoes are seriously like eight feet tall. Part of that I'm sure is because she's giving them higher trellises so they can continue to go. Like you can see they want to keep going. But the other part of that is she filled her beds with cow manure. So I know that for next year I have a lot of amending to do because even though we used some bagged um, garden soil um, that said that, you know, it had fertilizer in it and everything, we also used some um, just like loom that has no nutrition in it. So I think my beds need more fertilization. So that's my goal for next year. Over here on this side is... Um, Cantaloupe. Jeez, why couldn't I remember the name of cantaloupe? <laughs> Amelia loves cantaloupe. She'll eat a whole one by herself. So I was hopeful for these, but these first two ones, you can see that the chickens really did some damage to the leaves there. The other two are looking okay, but again, just really slow. So I don't know. And then I've got cabbages over here, and then these are Brussels sprouts, which again, the chickens have just been mowing on. Um, but I'm hopeful now that they'll kind of recover that we've got the chickens locked up give them a break but a couple of these heads of cabbage they just like pecked the centers right out of them <sighs> chickens I left a couple of broccoli plants because my broccoli just didn't do anything it grew and it would grow like this and then nothing 
So I'm just continuing to let these ones go to see what happens. Um, and then over there, there's three sun gold cherry tomatoes, which again, mine are just like, they're kind of getting up there now, but they're not like these big, huge, massive bushes like I'm seeing other people. This side is more cucumber. So these two are the muncher. And then these two, one of them is the white. So this one right here that's doing really well is the white cucumber. I'm gonna have to remember what that one is. Um, but this one has already put off um, a cucumber. The chickens only ate like a little bit of it, so I was able to salvage it and eat the rest of it myself, but I had to pick it a little bit earlier than I think is probably right um, because they had already started to damage it. So back here is the peppers in the front of this bed, and again, you can see the damage from chickens just plopping themselves right down there. This is what happened, is they plop themselves right down there and then just eat on the tomatoes. Not cool. So hopefully, I've still got lots of fruit on these guys, but these ones are like, meh. The Brandywine Black and the Hillbilly, the four on that half, are doing really well in putting on some big fruit, but we'll see. I'm sure this one is because this marigold just like took over. I didn't realize those were gonna be such big varieties of marigolds. They're beautiful, but big. Like, look at this guy. That's awesome. I'm excited about this one. <laughs> uh, this bed is more carrots. Again, I'm gonna pull those up. Um, onions, which I have no idea how to grow, but they look cool. So I need to do some more research on that. Like when they're ready, I don't know. Do I eat them this year or do I plant them again next year? I don't, I haven't done my homework on onions. Um, on this side of the trellis, I have a watermelon and a honeydew that are like kind of okay, I guess, but they're not growing up the trellis <laughs> yet. And on this side, I have more watermelon. Um, over here was where I had all of the broccoli and I pulled it all out because it just wasn't doing anything and I was getting frustrated wasting space with it. So you can see there's two little squash plants coming up, um, winter squash. So I'm hoping to get some fall harvest out of those and just let them do their thing. A couple of tomatoes in the pots back there, a couple of those are turning. These were mystery ones, so cool. And then a whole bunch of corn that I replanted since the corn up in the in ground kind of came up so spotty. I really, really wanted to get some corn. It's still pretty short, but looks happy. And then these are jester squash, winter squash. They look awesome. I'm so happy to finally see something climbing. And some radishes just stuck in the front there. Same thing, some more radishes right there and another variety of squash that again, I would have to look at what it was because I cannot remember. But they look pretty happy. The black cherry tomatoes are over on this side of the bed. And in between, I have a bunch more radishes planted, which they came up in little, their little seedlings and the chickens just kept eating them. And same thing, laying in this bed. So I had re-sown, I think they were still in here. So I don't know. I might just kind of pull everything and try it again for fall harvest. And then this is where I had all of my lettuce and peas were on the end there. And the peas did awesome, um, but they have a pretty short life. So, you know, we ate a bunch of peas off of them. Um, I've got a morning glory there that Amelia planted in Girl Scouts. But so I pulled all the peas out and re-sowed some more beans because we eat more beans as a family than peas really. So I planted some um, climbing varieties of beans, uh, a couple of bush varieties of beans, and then I re-sowed lettuces and like my spinach is coming up here. Right there. So I did the, um, I did the high intensity 
again, but I did it a little bit less this time, just because last time they were so, so close. And I was eating off of them just like buzz cutting the top, like a haircut. And they just continued to grow back so crazy. So anyway, that's the garden. It's looking pretty good. I'm happy with it. I've definitely learned some lessons, which I am sure is just the case every year, right? Like it's never gonna be perfect. You just learn a little bit every year and keep getting better. And I mean, this is pretty crazy because like I said, I started with one um, garden bed that was probably the size of one of these long ones. It was probably four by eight-ish. Um, and that winter, we plowed and it just got plowed over. But that's what I started with and I planted so much stuff in that tiny little bed, like a pumpkin plant and corn and carrots and all kinds of stuff in there. And that was really just my launch into experimenting with gardening and learning to grow my own food. So I don't know, I'm learning as I go, I'm trying not to get down on myself um, because it's not producing a whole lot, but um, it's something, you know, and I need to work on my canning skills next, I guess. So be on the lookout for YouTube videos of that. <laughs> anyway, hope you have a nice day. Thanks for checking this out. See you next time. Bye.